Hey everyone, this is Rob aka Memory Lapse again and uh, this video will be the uh, tutorial or primer if you will uh, primer video for my 8-rack deck creation um, I'll go over in this video um, my card choices, I'll talk about what 8-rack is and what it isn't um, I'll talk about some fundamental uh, deck building principles and uh, some matchup information and um, some pros and cons. So that's pretty much the overview. Um, this video is meant to be uh, a companion video to the written primer at MTGS. That's uh, Magic the Gathering Salvation. They have some fantastic magic forums, pretty much the best magic forums out there. Hoorah for those guys. Um, but anyway, uh, let's get started. Um, if you're watching this video, you will want to know what the heck the deck's about. And here we go. Alright, so 8-Rack is the name of the deck. And what it is, is a hand control deck. It is an old school uh, throwback style of deck with a whole different suite of new school cards. So the idea of hand control is nothing new. I mean, that they've been doing hand control since, uh, you know, pretty much the start of Magic. So, hand control, you know, okay, not the exact start, but, you know, shortly thereafter, once matter, uh, Magic sort of evolved into the game that we know it today. Um, but hand control has been around. Now, it's never been, in my opinion, as good as it is now. Um, I'm going to sort of go over sort of the card choices here in a little bit, but I want to talk about what is the diff what what is uh, eight rack and it is hand control and what is an eight rack and it is not board control. Okay, so there's a big difference between hand control and board control, and this difference is lost. I guess that this difference um, between hand control and board control never made it to modern, like. Uh, you know, it, it existed in other formats, Legacy and Old Extended, uh, for a while, a long time. I sort of fell out of favor uh, when Faye started kind of uh, just destroying everyone. Um, you know, back in the glory days of Blue Black Faye with Jeet, and then eventually Jace, and it just got ridiculously overpowered. Um, but people sort of stopped playing it back around that time frame. Um, but when they just, you know, designed modern and came up with modern, nobody ever really remembered, uh, that hand control is the thing. Um, and you will see a ton of board control decks. So what is, uh, you know, what's an example of a board control deck? Um, well, let's take the, the deck that's most closely related to um, my 8-rack deck, okay, Mono Black Control. This is not a Mono Black Control deck, X over this. It is not a Mono Black Control deck. Mono Black Control seeks to use plenty of discard, for sure. They use the discard to uh, eliminate uh, threats, you know, early and late game threats. They use uh, uh, cards like Damnation to control the board. And also cards like Liliana to control the board. And then they beat you to death with efficient beaters like um, Corlash. Um, mm, you know what's more popular right now is uh, not so much these regular beaters as uh, the Infect creature package. There's a, a Phyrexian Crusader is really good. Uh, there's a Flyer, I can't remember the name. But uh, there's a Flying Black Infect one for two mana. And then there's a bunch of Artifact Infects. Um, and that's usually the package you see. It, it's it, quite efficient, so you don't have to have a ton of space devoted to uh, uh, your your finishers. Um, and you can devote a lot of uh, space to discard and board control. But that is a board control deck. This it makes no attempt, even though it discards you know, annoying threats, it makes no attempt to truly control the hand. So it is not that. Um, another example of a board control deck is your classic Jund. Um, Jund is really 
an evolution of a deck called the rock from uh old extended and you know other formats as well uh it uses red it's it's essentially the rock with red um junk you would call that now uh more of a classic rock but um board control decks through and through uh they get you know they play efficient cards that give you um uh give you position position advantage and card advantage and then they control whatever is uh you know in their way with abrupt decay and um you know lightning bolt death right shaman and gets rid of graveyard stuff it, it's a board control deck you know it's a great one jund is a fantastic deck um this is not that this is not the type of strategy that i'm going for here and it's not just um how do i want to say it, it, it's not that i i don't think board control is good or important it's just that if you refine your deck building to um you know, you isolate one particular strategy and then you focus on this strategy. Um, that's a really good way of, of finding different angles to attack uh, common decks that you can expect to find like net decks. You know, all your tier 2, tier 1 decks. So, what I've done here is, you know, these, these you might find a lot of these cards in other decks, but as a whole, like the Gestalt, you know, the the sum of all of these things together here comes uh, turns this deck into a true hand control deck, um, uh, a la Days of Your Rats and um, old school rack decks from from forever ago. But we have a lot um, of modernized cards that are fantastic, um, and so let's go over some of them. Um, well, first of all, you've got your, your, your two eight racks. So this is what the deck's named for it. Um, one of the, the tricks to this, is the reason this whole thing works is this was, uh, this came out in, um, uh, Return to Ravenka. So this is not a brand new card. This is a couple, uh, sets old and it sort of just snuck in here. It's called Shrieking Affliction. Uh, the beginning of each opponent's upkeep. Um, if you have one or less, you lose three life, and it, it's essentially a rack, but with a, a you know a couple differences. Um, uh, it does its full power at one or less, whereas rack does two damage at one. It's an enchantment, um, so it's di more difficult to remove than rack. Red has no way of dealing with enchantments. Um, Red and black, neither one of them have a uh, way of dealing with enchantments, uh, but red can deal with artifacts. So it's slightly more difficult to remove. Enchantments are actually the most difficult permanents to remove. Um, so it has that advantage. Um, and it costs the same. And so you have your eight finishers, which when activated, deal a lot of damage in a short period of time. Um, and they only cost one. So uh, one of the major uh, strategies that I've employed here, and I want you guys to really listen to this, it, it's critical that when you're designing your decks, for whatever decks you're designing, that you pay very close attention to your mana curve. And your mana curve will decide what cards are okay to go in it, and it will decide how the deck plays out so in this case um for a, a proactive hand controlled deck i have an extremely low mana curve i have um all but three cards in this particular version i mean this is i'm not going over the, this this primer is including smallpox i have plenty of versions that don't include him uh or don't include the smallpox and you know, splashes and all kinds of other stuff you can check out in the written primer. But, uh, you know, X out the smallpox. I really only have two cards 
that costs more than one mana and the idea here is that the deck operates on very low mana and extra lands drawn are pitched to Raven's Crime. So it, it's a clever design in my opinion because uh, it, it operates on a very low mana curve. So alright so there's your eight racks and uh, the next you see we've got one, two, three, four uh, one CC discards, four of each. Excuse me. Yeah, there's four of each, four thought C's. Sometimes I pull back on some of those. Um, so that's 16 discard spells right there uh, at one CC. Uh, Raven's Crime. This card is extremely underrated in modern. This is a workhorse card. Uh, especially in a design like this that's made to operate on low mana extra lands are not useless and even if you draw them in your hand or if you rip them mid to late game they're still discard they do exactly what you want them to be doing which is discarding their hand and unlike all the other targeted discards this gets rid of lands in their hand um, now they have to choose to do that but You'll see it do it. You'll see it happen a lot. So, um, so this gets rid of. Uh, you know, this is your. You will have some. You know, at least you know two of these sixteen cards in your opening hand. To you can want to attack right away if possible. Um, it's a proactive deck. It means you start on turn one, uh, destroying their hand and removing threats. Um, the smallpox we can talk about. Uh, there's another underrated card, but it is a difficult card to find a home for. Um, even the smallpox decks, quote unquote, I think uh, they struggle to use this card efficiently. Um, a lot of those decks play creatures, and I don't think this card fits in a deck where you're going to be sacking your own creatures. Uh, another thing I want to talk about this deck, there is no creatures. So, um, by having a deck that's creature free or, you know, as close as to that, it, is, it doesn't matter. Like if you're running death rate shamans or, you know, whatever, maybe a gatekeeper of Malachar or something like that, uh, it's still essentially, you know, creature free. These guys, you're not counting on them to, uh, beat your opponent to death. They're utility creatures. Um, but by running, uh, you know, nearly creature-free or creature-free deck, you give your opponent a bunch of dead cards. So right away, you know, when you're destroying their hand, you can avoid, like, save those till later when you're doing your uh, massive discards through Raven's Crime and Liliana, and, you know, they're going to pitch them anyway. Uh, so not as much um, threats to begin with, and then what little threats there are, uh, are destroyed with our discard suite. So um, back to smallpox. Smallpox is really nice against like Tron. Uh, it, they can't afford to lose lands. Uh, they can't afford to lose cards in their hand either. So it's nice against them. Um, it's really great against Blouses. Uh, another deck that it doesn't get a whole lot of you know, attention on the forums and stuff like that. Nobody really talks about it in the general discussion, but it's a powerful deck. Um, Blouses is really good, and you'll see it a lot in the MTGO tourneys, um, heads up, and um, daily events and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, smallpox, use at your own risk. It's not always great to have. Um, and you've got a few other options here. You could um, go for some Geth's Verdicts instead. Uh, I like this card a lot. I like this card as uh, my primary uh, creature removal card in a deck like this because I can, yeah, they get to choose, but I can essentially make them choose what I want by just, you know, removing the other stuff. So it's kind of like um, an all purpose creature removal and lose one life, you know, pretty cool. So there's two in there. I've got four small pox and two guest verdicts. I think I will end up probably doing a 3-3 split between small pox and guest verdicts and call it good because you don't want too many of them in your hand. 
you can't, uh, you know, you discard yourself and you destroy your own lands. And the deck's meant to operate on low lands, so, you know, if you've got extra, it's no, no big deal. But if you're pitching your lands to Raven's Crime, you might only have three on deck and you don't really want to lose, you know, sack one. So, sometimes no problem and it's just a totally one-sided, overpowered card. And other times, you know, you have to pay the pri Piper to use it, so still a cool card consider it um now let's talk about the two uh these are sort of like the you know there's always been one cc great discard there's always been rack and smallpox have been around forever but the new like modernized version of of hand control contains this little lady right here liliana of the veil this is the best three cc card in modern uh, in my opinion she's also the best planeswalker in modern uh, at 3 cc she has a finish her ultimate is uh, a, a game winner I don't really think any others like I mean you know, Jace Blarin or whatever I guess in a certain so kind of conditions you know some very narrow conditions Jace can have a, his finisher can end a game but the, hers can definitely end a game and she fits into a number of different strategies uh, she's a control planeswalker her plus one is one-sided pretty much uh, it's so it's non-stop discard it doesn't affect you you'll see as you play the games um, it helps you in fact because of this ensnaring bridge uh, <laughs> people don't realize what a bomb this card is uh, this card, I, I don't see it played in any tier one decks. Um, nothing's coming to mind. Uh, it completely attacks an entire, um, strategy. Like, any deck with a creature-based win has to deal with this card if they are to win. So, you have a, you know, this holds, you know, this holds the line, okay? And while this is holding the line for anything that slips past you because they you're gonna have some stuff get cast they you know they draw and they cast um so this protects you uh but while that's going on you're destroying their hand and you're keeping it destroyed with liliana and raven's crime they they cannot hold um cards in their hand and they will try, they will not cast spells on purpose just to keep, you know, from taking rack damage or affliction damage. And once these things turn on, it doesn't take long. So you, you only need, um, you know, this is kind of like a lock. You know, the bridge is kind of like a lock. She's kind of like a lock. This is kind of like a lock. But these are all soft locks. But you don't need to last forever. You just need to last and while these two cards do their awful, awful damage. God, it's it's so annoying to die to the rack. It's evil. Um, so, right, so this is that's the general strategy here. Um, and this, this is a modernized version of an old school theme. Uh, your, uh, your hand control is nothing new. It's got some, uh, sure it has weaknesses. Somebody drops, um, like, uh, this card, for example. Um, yeah, this card right here. All right, I'll go like that. Um, Ley Line of Sanctity. Uh, you're done. I mean, not always. Liliana plays around it, but, uh, eh you're hurting pretty bad if this gets dropped on turn one so yeah you've got weaknesses and you can splash a different color to you know if you if you think you're going to be facing a ton of these but you know it, it's fairly common sideboard card but not super common like i would put it in like you know maybe 15 percent 20 percent maybe of all the sideboards that people aren't running it too much you know it's, it's they think of it as a protection against red deck wins and 
even then red deck wins has a whole creature package so it's like it's not viewed as as super effective against what it's meant to block but what it does block very effectively is uh your discard so but discard strategies are not seen really uh in modern so it's not as common of you know it's backbreaking to us but it's not as common as you might think and if you're worried about it you can easily splash you know for some sideboard protection you know green or white will take care of uh the ley line or um yeah green or white pretty much um so talking about some of the matchups uh this deck will destroy i can pretty much guarantee you um you know 85 90 percent win rate against uh combo deck this 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 is a control deck to beat combo decks it's been a little bit gray in the past like uh blue you always think of blue as your control uh color and the combo decks were able to go off storm was able to go off past uh blue's kind of flimsy remand mana leak sort of com uh counter spells and it didn't seem to slow storm down um when seething song was still a thing uh so this is a totally different approach it's a control deck obviously um it's a straight up hardcore uh proactive control deck as whereas blue is a reactive control control strategy similar in that they they block threats from getting to the from getting to the table but where blue is reactive uh black is proactive and that's kind of satisfying if you if um you know you give it a try it, it's satisfying to you know open up their hand and just pull out their toys you, you can't play with your toys now i'm taking them away and it, it gets inside people's brains even worse than counter spells they expect counter spells they don't expect this um also it's very effective against counter spells discard destroys blue which is really nice because blue is making a very strong comeback take a look at some of those videos that i've posted of matches uh blue is has has found its niche and it's found its stride in tempo uh and even some um kind of modified control hard control strategies so blue's made a comeback it was initially thought that blue was really weak and modern but uh once people gave it some time and settled in and accepted the fact that it's not draw go anymore and embraced the tempo package that blue gives you uh it's become extremely popular and this deck right here will do wonders against your tempo it will do wonders against blue uh any combo it will destroy um it has uh hmm, it's not super great against i will say tron um you know th those matches can go either way like you know but pff, tron's a good deck uh it puts it's not an auto loss for sure you know like a lot of decks are auto loss to tron so this is, could go either way um it you know if you're expecting a lot of robots or if you're expecting a lot of tron i would recommend a red splash dump this uh well in any case i, I you know we'll, we'll look at some of my other lists i don't know exactly what i dumped but you know you've got a red splash for pyroclasm and uh possibly lightning bolt to you know instead of guess verdict and stuff like that to uh sweep you know if you got like a goblins meta or a uh robots meta like i said the pyroclasm works wonders there um the ensnaring bridge was great on its own versus robots uh they don't carry any main deck hate for this and usually not too much sideboard hate they kind of just um you know they might have some like radco's charm or something like that but uh yeah robots aren't really worried about artifacts typically so you can catch them off guard with this alone the the ensnaring bridge um tron's a different story 
uh, red, but if you're splashing red for robots and pyroclasm sweeper type things, you can have red has got some great uh, hate against Tron. You know, Blood Moon, you've got your um, Sewing Salt, land destruction in general, um, whatever, crack the earth if you wanted to. Crack the earth kind of is better than uh, uh, people give it credit for. So anyway, the point is, you know, check out the primer, look at some of the different variations of it. But this, this is an example of the core idea. You know, this isn't the only deck. There's modifications to this deck. Um, and uh, it, it's modular. You know, you can take certain pieces out as long as you keep most of the core. And you definitely want to keep these two, or these, these, these last five here, you want to keep for sure. These first four you can, you know, adjust to taste and, you know, you got your guest's verdict too. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, there, there's, so there's a, a good amount of room for interpretation and variation, but as long, you want to keep these core here, the, the eight racks and then these three cards, and that will get you started on your hand control and, you know, um, use different diff discard spells. There's some interesting ones out there, Funeral Charm. Um, blackmail nobody really ever uses um, I've tried it I like it you know um, reveal three opponent reveals three cards and you discard one of them um, this is that's another way to get lands it's kind of nice against uh, a Tron they might have to show you a Tron piece um, anyway um, so that's the that's the primer uh, I hope it wasn't too long I hope I kept it interesting uh, throughout and post comments, ask questions, read the primer. Uh, I'll put links in the description of this video to the, the written primer and the deck list will be in there. And so I'll try and make it all one kind of uh, synergistic package as a, you know, deck tutorial slash primer. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Please thumbs up if you liked it. Um, go ahead and post your comments and your trolls. Uh, and your flames tell me how I'm a uh, noob and discard doesn't work and uh, then play me and see if it works or not and check out my other videos where it shows the deck in action against uh, your commonly found decks you know tempo and Tron and other stuff I'm gonna have a lot of videos it works so well it's easy to get um, footage um, so all right thumbs up subscribe um, troll me, flay me, do what you gotta do, just get some action going on this video. Thanks a lot guys, appreciate it.